big up my G, big up my pal, big up somebody that I've known for a very, very long time. The one, the only DJ, Chloe Robinson, because she said this very interesting little hot take over here on Twitter, which I kind of want to expand on. Controversial question. Does being absolutely stunning visually assist you as a woman in the DJ scene in this current day in some ways? Instagram followers are much higher, etc. And do promoters go off these numbers in a lot of cases over music? Discuss. This is obviously true, and I feel like it's an unfortunate part of the scene. Because I remember when I was doing a little... No, I remember kind of maybe a few months ago, I did like a little comparison thing between this DJ that I used to follow, who, you know, I'm not really a fan of anymore because I just kind of realised what the conversation was. Like, hold on, are you trying to sun me? Like, is this... Are you trying to, like, tell me what to say? I was like, okay, cool. Go fuck yourself. But, which I understand, and I understand their, their point of view, her point of view, actually. So at the time, I think I remember made the, making a comparison between a fat comedian and a really attractive DJ, visually, right? In terms of them DJing. I think to myself, you know what? I wonder if there's some sort of correlation. I remember the fat comedian basically saying, oh, um, they were interested in like kind of putting themselves out there on social media in a very kind of suggestive way, in a joke way, like always doing like half, half naked most photo shoot. I think it was Stavi actually, that's a, that's a comedian. Stavi was doing all these fucking promotions on his Instagram where he do these kind of photo shoots like, you know, in a bathtub covered in baked beans and shit, um, being semi-naked and it would always kind of be okay on Instagram. And I remember him saying, basically, he'd have conversation with models who are more conventionally attractive. And they would basically say, if they try to do the same photo shoot that he did on Instagram, they'd actually get banned for it. So he's actually quite curious to see the amount of things you could get away with as a somewhat ugly fat dude, as opposed to the things you can get away with if you're an attractive woman on social media. And I thought it was an interesting conversation to have in terms of a podcast, comparing the conventionally attractive woman to, you know, the fat kind of um comedian guy for some reason or for whatever reason which is completely understandable from the dj point of view she did not take it that way she took it very she took it kind of like as an insult because i guess it kind of brought up the whole issue of looking at her as an attractive person when you don't want to be maybe what's that word called objectified you want to be just viewed as you are when i'm when i think in my point of view with that thing what i want to try and say is that We've all got eyes. We can see what we see. It's an unfortunate part of the world, but it kind of is what it is. And with DJing, you only have to see on some of the biggest platforms, like I'm not even going to try and check it right now because I like just kind of shooting out my ass. But I'm sure if you go on Boiler Room, if you go on Horror, Mix Mag, and all these platforms that do DJ live streams, I, get, I bet if you go on all these places, like more likely than not, the more attractive women, the more women that show skin on there, usually have higher views than other DJs on there, just because of what they look like, because people instantly see that and want to click it. Whether or not the person's good or not, doesn't really matter. So it's obvious to me, and to anybody that's got eyes, and that's got common sense, and isn't so... Because I feel like you have to kind of accept the world for what it is, and then try and change it. But trying to force the change via your viewpoint is just a bit weird right and kind of denying the realities of it is strange so in that case i feel like that lady was kind of denying the realities of what the world was as opposed to kind of understanding what it's doing for you and then trying to work within it whatever cool own opinion the reality is i think that if you go on all the major live streaming music platforms that, D that djs go on to live stream for the most part if there's a woman on there that's conventionally attractive or showing lots of skin usually those views videos have a lot of higher views than others right it kind of is what it is. It's all what it is. I, I don't really give a fuck, right? No one should really give a fuck. Um, I think if I was going to advise anybody who I knew who was a woman who's getting into DJing or was, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, trying to pursue that line of action, I would probably go, I would probably advise against it. I think it's probably not advisable to go down the route of kind of tapping into your looks and shit to get somewhere because i feel like eventually if you're an actual artist you're gonna want to be known for more than just what you look like because you can't really control that it's just something you know it's kind of your luck and whatever genetics women but whatever it may be in terms of how you look but i think your artistry is uh, your actual artistry and your talent is what's going to probably stand the test of time and it's what's going to actually have you remembered right in terms of you know the kind of imprint that you left in your scene and whatnot and your legacy blah -de blah 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 so i think if you're in it for the long run or even not even a long run even for the short time you should legitimately um try to do it for the right reasons but i also i'm not kind of ignorant to the idea or to the realities of it is that to make it as a professional dj especially in the scene wherever you're in 
is really difficult. There is no one route to success. It's very hard to get there to the top. And there's a lot of people competing for those what for those very small positions. There's not many, especially in, in the UK as a good example, there's not many clubs really. There's probably way too many DJs for the clubs. The scene is really fragmented. Um, there's a lot of people that kind of stay hang around forever and ever and never kind of let go. So there's not a lot, a lot of spaces that are coming up open. You kind of have to kind of force your way in via crowbar and whatnot. So when you do eventually make it, I understand why you use what you can use to kind of get your foot through the door. I get it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I feel like you just have to be understanding of the realities of what that kind of attention can bring. Because you can't, because I feel like it's a bit disingenuous to kind of tap into or to kind of embrace your looks as a way to kind of promote yourself and then get annoyed when you get some very thirsty ass messages or the replies or the DMs are a bit crazy. You kind of have to be aware of what you're kind of sending out there signal-wise. Not, it's not to say the whole adage of like, oh, that girl's wearing a short skirt. That's why she got raped sort of shit. Nah. But let's be honest also. If you're out here DJing, showing fucking titties every day, you can't be surprised when somebody comments titties on your fucking comments and get upset and want to block them. Like, it just is what it is. Like, in my personal opinion. But I'm curious to see what the people in the DJ world had to say about it. So let's read through the replies of her thing. Because you know what I had to say about it, right? Folks like me, mid-size, uncomfortable in front, of com uh, in front of camera, don't get the can she even DJ comments. I get the body shaming comments. So it could be a double-edged sword. Okay, cool. That's true. So I guess you, it could be a body image comments. That, that, that's probably a little bit more. I wonder if that's more hurtful than being objectified by your looks. Hmm. I wonder. Imagine you're actually a, a real, I don't say a real DJ, but you actually care about music. You care about being a good DJ but you actually happen to be attractive. What's more offensive? Getting comments on your mixes when you live stream on YouTube? Oh my God, how hot you are. Or if you're not conventionally attractive, but you're a good DJ, getting comments about how ugly you look, how fat you are, how weird your tits are, your arms look weird. Like what's more offensive? What would get on your nerves more? Being always subject objectified by your looks or be always called ugly every time you get in front of a camera? <laughs> I don't know. They're probably both... You know, two sides of the same coin, probably, I'd assume. Because I'm sure a, an attractive girl after a while, there's only so many times you can hear somebody say you have nice eyes. You're like thinking, shut up. You know what I mean? You just want to throw them off a bridge sometimes. Another person says, yeah. Honest, I've found that since I started DJing, I received a lot more violently phrased abuse. <laughs> Holy shit, online. But I guess it's technically boosts my algorithm and feeds into itself. Having a platform to begin with obviously makes advertising itself easier. Exactly. I feel like this is a very common sense balanced way to look at it unfortunately the dj world especially on, on social media is going to invite a level of fucking attention and eyes that you're probably not going to get in the real world and it's anonymous right people are just going to say what they want to say i just don't believe in censorship or in telling people what they can or cannot say or cannot talk about i think that's fucking insane um, even on your own platform just let the shit ride like it doesn't fucking matter in the grand scheme of things it shouldn't really affect your day-to-day -day. but you can fucking you know interpret it how you want to interpret it i also think it's good to see it on both sides of the same coin because i feel like some people don't understand that sometimes the negative comments are just contributing to your success just a matter of a positive one because you know there's engagement behind it there's clicks there's replies um there's whatever there's just whatever right there's engagement going on in those kind of negative comments so they can sometimes help you also so i feel like sometimes being aware of the pros and cons of social media can be somewhat helpful when you do go into it so you're not just sat there naively thinking every comment you're meant to be getting is meant to be praise it's not going to work like that that's not how the internet works another person here says it does without a doubt I have many beautiful DJ friends and they are very much aware of the interest in them is based on their attractiveness. First skills first and skills second. Some have even undergone entire imagery ramps to get more bookings. Now, I don't think this is bad. I have no issue with it in the slightest. And this is me as a struggling DJ, struggling DJ to get gigs. I should probably have the opposite opinion be like oh man there should be real djs put on some clothes you don't have to know how to beat match no 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 no. any way you get into this scene is the way you get in it's that difficult out here trust me it's fucking hard especially in i guess more competitive markets are probably berlin's probably diff more way more difficult maybe parts of fucking america are way more difficult it's hard to get into scenes it's just really difficult to get into the industry so any way you fucking get in i don't give a fuck the most important thing for me is just your ability to play 
and actually being good at what you do, right? Having a, maybe a taste level or whatever, even more so than mixing skills. Actually having good taste in music, knowing how to sequence a set together is way more important to me than how you got into the scene. Whether you're wearing a top hat, you go naked, you're dancing on top of the fucking decks. I don't fucking care. However you get is how you get in. I've got no problem with that in the slightest. Another one. I found that it's 10 times harder to prove myself and make people understand you can be hot and talented. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> okay, way to way to like boost yourself. I like that approach. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. That's also probably a bit of a problem too, right? I'm sure that does exist where you get booked. You get booked based on your attractiveness, but also people don't take you seriously. Because I'm sure that must be like a a common thing, a common annoyance for a, an attractive woman DJ. You go to play at somewhere. You go to play somewhere. You're convinced you're attractive, and for whatever reason, people just assume. You don't know what you're doing. So they just automatically start helping you. They want to help you plug in the cables at the back. They want to make sure you know how to plug in your headphones. <laughs> they let you know where the USB hole is. I'm sure that must happen. I'm sure that happens with women DJs. I'm sure that fucking happens, man. I'm sure. They turn to gigs and guys just like, it's like a weird man's, no, is it, it's not even mansplaining. It's like, you just, they just, just want to take control and help them with their gear. Like, assuming they have never played before in front of an audience. <laughs> on equipment. Oh, another one. Honestly, I think it makes it harder for people to constantly, um, who are questioning your success and whether or not you deserve followers, your flowers. Okay, cool. That's, that's true. I guess that's why I think in general, if you're an attractive person, use it to your advantage, but also make the pivot into being an artist and being all about the music very quickly. Like, just do it snap. Like, I think a good example of it is Daria Kolosova. And again, this is a very commercial and mainstream example. But that Daria Kolosova, she's a good example of it. And maybe even Nastya to a certain ex example, right? Where I think they purposely used their attractiveness and their, you know, tendency to wear skimpy outfits as a way to kind of get eyes and attention. Then as soon as they got into the industry, established themselves, they completely pivoted and did it all artist stuff. Like, you know, dropping, having a label, doing loads of releases and shit, putting on their own parties. Like, it became strictly about the music and the vibes and shit. It, did, it wasn't just constantly sex, 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 image, 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 image. I think that's mostly important. That's probably a better way to counteract it. It's not easy, but it may work. Another one. Well, I'm absolutely stunning and this has been the quietest year so far, so I don't think it helps. In some scenes, it does. I remember being told by Miss, Un Miss Monique for the first time as she got many views on her YouTube streams. I'd never heard of her, but years later, she'd still be doing them and has earned her spot. Respect to, for the hard work consistency in the game. Yeah, I think another person that had the same sort of issue I remember reading about was the DJ called Jada G. She was, I think, famous for kind of thinking... I remember reading an interview where she kind of sounded like she was very conflicted about her success. I feel like it might have been like the first thick mantle or something. Well, I guess maybe maybe people hadn't seen what she looked like, but she's essentially like, you know, mixed race, big curly hair, right? Super bright smile. So I guess people were leaving like, you know, comments down in the, in the in, you know, replies in the comments. I'm going to go, how hot, how hot, how hot. And here's this DJ, Jada G, playing all vinyl, right? All vinyl, mixing impeccably, amazing set. And everything that's in the comments is just like how hot she looks. So she had a bit of that kind of weird kind of crisis of like, fuck, man. Like, it's not my fault I look like this, but also like, respect my artistry. Um, it continues. It works if you're mo monetizing a following from elsewhere, plus gatekeepers who believe in you. I had stalkers, assault, bitchiness. Um, others tried to use me and no protection. As you know, I've been in this for a long time. Releases under my belt. Um, no proper agent either. It isn't easy. As you know, you know, people that say that sort of stuff, it's really crazy in a sentence, as you know. Um, but yeah, um, I get this. This makes a lot of sense because I remember reading another interview of the DJ. Um, what's her name? Maria something, I forgot her name. Mary something, I forgot her fucking name. Oxtomy or something, right? I think that's her name. And she was, she shared this fucking horrifying story where she was saying that she went to go play at, at some venue, like a festival or some shit. And she's walking through the crowd to go to her fucking, to the booth. And a guy just came up and started touching her tits and shit. Like, just like, started grabbing her and whatnot. Like, literally sexually assaulting her as she's on the way to go play. Like, <laughs> imagine how that is. And I think she said, she got the same sort of shit on the way, the train there and stuff. Like, I don't know. I can't imagine what that must be like day to day. Like, 
Because clubs already are a little bit of a fucking hazard anyway, especially ones that don't have good door, door policies or whatever it may be, or they're just clearly, a mass, you know, pointed at the masses. Like, I can't imagine. Anyway, it continues. How do you define stunning? What measures do you use? Okay, shut up you. Uh, another person here says, my opinion is that most definitely helps as much as it, as much as the music industry, it's personality appearance based, especially since social media. However, it's also a magnet for abuse, particularly for bitter men accusing an attractive female of, of having success you due to their looks. Yeah, but it's not men though, isn't it? Only. Everybody does this. Like it's everybody. It's just like an everybody thing. It's just social media in general. It's just, you know, a platform where people can just say what they want and they're just going to say it. It's not really a, it's not a men thing really. I'm sure there are attractive dudes out there who, you know, there's guys and girls out there who complain that they get on the gigs because of how they look. It's just what it is, isn't it? But hey, what do I know? Another one says here, being good looking helps everybody. Mochak is really pretty and loved on TikTok. Obviously, women judge more, but people still have to listen to music and sets. There's tons of mediocre music hotties who end up quitting also overall style and vibe. Now, I think this is a good place to end because I feel like this, for me, is what I think the world should go in. I feel like you should do everything. Do everything. So this guy, Mochak, who I've, I've obviously discovered because of TikTok also, he's everywhere. So in my head, if he's everywhere, that means he fucking works hard. So what he does is that he kind of capitalizes on the looks that he has that girls would be into, guys and girls probably like, but he also backs it up by output. So if you're going to be the conventionally attractive woman, maybe embrace your titties, embrace the cleavage, embrace the face, but also fucking churn out the content stream after stream after stream release after release after release party after party after party like put the work in and then maybe by default that will get to a place where your artistry starts to fucking outstrip what you look like and people don't care anymore because you're just putting out so much content and they can always consume that might be the trick actually that may be actually the trick just do everything in your power if you've got looks do it if you've got hustle do it if you've got a unique point of view do it whatever you can do to get your foot into a door do it because unfortunately there is no apparatus out there um there's no fucking institution there's no fucking guide or people out there that are gonna hold your hand through this scene you have to kind of figure it out on your own and god forbid asking another dj for help you're definitely going to get left on scene so just do what you can do with the tools you have to uh, at your arsenal that's all you can do but I, I always always will kind of say to anybody that will listen to me especially women be very careful of playing that attractive game because unfortunately especially on social it can attract the worst type of community of people around your shit and it can be hard to shake you know it can be really hard to shake but hey what do I know? What do I bloody know?